probably the only reason I'm still around today. Well, I'm about to start some meal prep to get myself set up for the week. And I thought I'd show you what a typical type of meal prep would be for me uh, living out of this little minivan. Uh, of course, I've already made a cup of coffee just to make sure I am in the right mood to get started on this work. So I'm going to start off cooking some potatoes. I'm actually going to par cook these, so meaning I'm going to cook them mostly all the way through, but not completely through. I don't want them soft. Just cuts down my time that I spend on the stove in the morning. So this is a thing that I like to do and potatoes are a pretty big staple in my diet. So I'm just going to give these a little wash and then I will get them on the stove. Oh, this bag of potatoes is all different sizes. I've got some little tiny ones and then some more normal size ones. So what I'm forced to do here is to uh, try to even them out a little bit. So I'm quartering or halving up the larger ones and then the little tiny ones will just go straight into the pot. I'm uh, trying to get them all to be uh, consistent in size. That way they'll all cook evenly. Okay, I've got these covered in water. I'm going to put some salt in these and I, I like to really salt these heavily. Uh, some people say salt them like the sea and I think that's probably pretty accurate for what I do. Um, I really want these well seasoned now so that I don't have to season them again later. Uh, so these are ready to go and then also of course uh, I uh, clean up as I go. I keep a little spray bottle of white vinegar. This is just plain old white vinegar and I can spray down my cutting board. Of course I wash these potatoes before they touch my cutting board but uh, you can never be too careful of course with food safety so this is just something I like to do and vinegar is a really good uh, disinfectant uh, so I use it for everything. Okay, so get these on the stove. Since they're all pretty small chopped, uh, they're not going to take long at all to cook. And remember, I, I'm not cooking these all the way through either. That's the way I like them. I'm par cooking them. That way I can finish cooking them off and heating them up in whatever I'm using them with. Uh, I've been eating a lot of eggs in the morning lately, uh, and I just find that the potatoes go well with uh, the eggs, uh, I can put them in tacos or burritos or just eat them by themselves. Uh, so uh, this has been kind of a good staple here that I try to do at least once a week, although this is probably only about three days of potatoes for me. So uh, I'll definitely have to do this again uh, in a few days just uh, to keep my prep going. But this is what I do. Uh, I generally just buy small amounts of things because I have a very small fridge. Uh, so I just kind of keep that in mind. If I had a bigger fridge, I could probably prep a little bit more. Uh, although they do tell you not to store pre-cooked potatoes more than a couple of days. But I do keep my fridge really, really cold. Uh, the bottom of my fridge is actually in the 20s. Uh, so it's not quite cold enough to freeze items that I put down in there, but it's cold enough that it keeps them uh, really fresh as long as I get them down in the bottom of the fridge. So that's what I do with the potatoes. I just make sure that they get down the bottom of the fridge and they last uh, more than two days, which is obviously not recommended uh, if you do look that up, but it's just what I do. Uh, now, since this is going to be pretty quick, uh, I do need to get on with prepping the next little bit, which is some beef that I bought. So this is some shaved beef that I bought from Trader Joe's and I have been overly critical of Trader Joe's lately and I, I don't mean to be. Uh, there, there have been some things about Trader Joe's that have changed and I have not liked but there are lots of things about Trader Joe's that are great and I continue to shop there uh, and one thing that I have not bought there too much in the past is beef. Um, but there are lots of Trader Joe's in the area that I'm at right now. And so I've been taking advantage of just shopping there because there are a bunch of things that are a much better price at Trader Joe's than other stores. Now, I'm not quite so sure about price of beef at Trader Joe's. Um, I don't think that this is the best deal, uh, but since I was shopping there, I went ahead and bought it. And I'm really quite happy with this uh, shaved beef. Uh, I've tried it before in the past and I wasn't real excited about it, but I bought some of this last week and prepped it up in much the same way that we're going to do uh, here today. And I was really happy with it. 
Uh, one thing about this beef is that I don't think it has a whole lot of flavor all on its own. Uh, it seems to be just a little mild in taste. Uh, and I, I think that's because I normally buy uh, grass-fed beef, uh, which this is not. So I'm going to season this up with some olive oil, uh, some chili powder, and some garlic powder, and then, of course, some sea salt. Uh, I use Himalayan pink salt uh, for everything, so that's what I've got here. So I think the uh, olive oil is going to kind of help get the seasoning on the meat. So I just do a little bit of that in there. And uh, the chili powder that I'm using is just regular chili powder. There's nothing else in there in this. It's just New Mexico chili powder. Uh, New Mexico chili is ground up into powder. And so since it is just chili powder on its own, I'm going to add some garlic powder in with this as well. I've got clean hand and dirty hand. I'm not mixing them up. I, I'm being careful here. Uh, and I'm going to add quite a bit of chili powder in this because I like uh, a good chili taste to this. So I'm going to make sure I get chili on every little bit of this meat uh, and quite a bit of it uh, too. I think it's uh, that's the one thing about this meat uh, from Trader Joe's here is it's just a little bit bland as far as I'm concerned. But chili powder, of course, is not. Uh, and that looks pretty good. So that'll just sit and uh, marinate a little bit. Uh, the potatoes should be pretty close to done. And yeah, just a couple more minutes. So let me uh, take advantage of the fact that I've got a sink with running water and soap I can uh, clean up here. Uh, you know, one thing that I could not live without uh, here, it's been, it's getting close to eight years now I've been living out of this van. Uh, I, I don't think I would have fared this long without a sink and running water. Uh, it takes up a lot of space here, but I use this thing all the time, especially when I'm doing my uh, food prep like I'm doing here. Uh, it's just kind of indispensable to be able to just quickly wash your hands and have it right here at the ready. Uh, one thing that I really highly recommend to anybody, I know not everybody wants a sink in their van, but boy, for me, I just don't know if I could have done without it all these years. These potatoes aren't quite cooked yet. I think they just need another two or three minutes. You're supposed to use a fork and not a knife to test for doneness with this because the knife goes in a little bit too easily and uh, it can kind of throw off your determination of how cooked they are, uh, but I don't have a fork. I think I have a fork somewhere uh, stuffed away, but I, I only use a spork, uh, and that's, uh, uh, you know, it, it's great for eating, but it's not so great for testing the potatoes, so this'll, uh, this is not going to help me so much. Maybe I should get a, uh, a regular fork out one of these days, but the knife actually works. Uh, since I have a couple of minutes, on the potatoes while I'm waiting for that. I can enjoy my coffee because I still have half a cup here. Oh, this is probably also a good time just to talk a little bit about why I do this cooking and meal prep uh, like I'm doing here. And that's because I've got some pretty major health issues going on. Uh, there's a couple of big health problems that I have and uh, the way that I keep them under control is by my diet. And this was something that I worked out years ago with a doctor. Uh, who found a problem that uh, dozens and dozens of doctors for uh, at least 30 years prior uh, just totally missed. And uh, as soon as I got the correct diagnosis uh, from a good doctor, finally, after all those years, uh, I'm feeling much better, but I do need to keep to the diet plan that he gave me. Uh, it's more of a prescription type of diet plan. Uh, and. Back when he first gave me that diet plan, I really objected. Uh, I, I looked at this big long list of foods that he wanted me to eat, and there was an even longer list of foods that I wasn't supposed to eat at all, that I just couldn't touch. And uh, I, I really didn't think I'd be able to keep to that diet plan. Uh, basically, everything on the do not eat list was my regular diet at the time. And everything that was on the eat list that he wanted me to get more of into my diet, uh, like beef uh, and grass-fed butter, uh, things like that, eggs. 
Um, those are all things that uh, were kind of expensive for me at the time, and I just I just tried to avoid uh, just because I just didn't have a whole lot of money to spend on food back then. Uh, but because the diagnosis was so expensive, uh, it took quite a quite a little while of testing uh, to get to the proper diagnosis from this doctor, and so it cost me a lot of money. And so because of that, uh, I decided just to follow the diet for a little while and just see what happens, you know. After spending all that money, of course, what's the worst thing that, that can happen? Uh, and it was a good thing that I actually followed through because uh, it's probably the only reason I'm still around today. Uh, just finding a good doctor that actually diagnosed me correctly uh, and then not only just gave me the correct diagnosis but gave me a good way to be able to manage uh, my illnesses uh, going forward and so it's something that I keep doing uh, now and it, it's uh, it's really important that I do all my own cooking. Um, th there's actually a whole list of ingredients that I have to avoid because I'm just downright allergic to them. Uh, a lot of food additives uh, I'm just allergic to and so that that was another thing that that doctor kind of narrowed in on and really helped me find out which no doctor ever did before him uh, and uh, it it almost makes me a little bit upset all the years of going to doctors and being misdiagnosed or just not even being diagnosed the correct thing. They just write you a prescription for something and send you on your way and expect a little pill to be able to make you feel better. Uh, and it never did uh, until, uh, you know, I found the right doctor that got me on the right path. So this is why I do most of my own cooking and this is why I very rarely eat out just because I, I can't uh, most of the time. Um, but I have learned to kind of enjoy cooking. Uh, cooking used to be a hobby of mine in the past, and then I went to work in a professional kitchen. I worked there 10 years and kind of lost a little bit of the joy of cooking, uh, and I've, I've realized that I kind of have to get back to that. Uh, but if, if cooking is difficult, uh, then I, I just don't do it. And I, I eat a little more simply. I start to eat things that I really shouldn't be eating. Uh, so that's another reason why I try to make sure I do a little bit of meal prep from time to time just to make meals go together a little bit quicker. Uh, then I just don't have any excuse not to follow the diet plan that uh, I know I need to follow. And I think the potatoes should be done now. They're actually a little overdone. I got yapping away there and uh, let them go a couple of minutes too long. Uh, now, I don't have a colander, so I use my little fish spatula here. This is a really multi-use item. So I'm just going to drain off the water here into my sink. This is something I like to do uh, because it kind of cleans out my uh, sink drain. So it's uh, doing two things at once here. Okay, so I'm just going to let these cool down for a few minutes and then we'll put those away. But uh, now I'm going to turn my attention to cooking off the meats. Okay, so I'm going to heat up my pan. I want this to get really hot before I start cooking the meat off. And then I will cook this in batches. If I throw all of this meat into this little pan uh, at once, it'll uh, steam it. And I don't want it to steam. I want to give it a little bit of color. So uh, I'll just do it in some batches. And then as I get it cooked off, I'll put the cooked meat into this little silicone bag. I really like these uh, silicone bags. I bought uh, these at Ikea a while back and they're really good quality. Uh, you can use them over and over again and they clean up really well. I did have one uh, not make it. Uh, it got stained really badly and I didn't mind the stain quite so much, but um, it had a weird smell to it too. I forget what I put in it. I uh, just couldn't get it cleaned out. So I did toss one of these out, but I still have two of these. Uh, and they're just really, really handy. Yeah, this is such finely shaved meat that it really uh, cooks up quickly and it's probably not the best choice of uh, a meat to pre-cook like this. Um, I think that this is shaved really fine to make uh, getting your dinner together really quick because uh, the, 
there's really no cooking time here, uh, but I chose this meat just because uh, it, it was inexpensive and uh, I didn't like the look of what I wanted. Uh, I really wanted some stew meats. That's what I went in to get. Uh, but it didn't look so good. This looked better. So I, I just switched up what I uh, was planning on. Um, and I think the stew meat is probably a better choice for pre-cooking because you got to do this step and then you got to uh, simmer it for a while on the stove. And so that, that would be uh, kind of a more normal thing for me to prep ahead of time is some kind of stew. Uh, but this is a nice change of pace too. It's, uh, it's really tender. And of course, with the added... Uh, chili powder, it's going to be really flavorful too. That last batch of meat is almost done, but I'll just uh, take a minute here and put the potatoes into my second silicon bag. I uh, really wish I had more of these. Uh, these things are really quite handy. Um, the only bad thing about these bags is they don't seal shut. Uh, by themselves. They have this little zipper on top, but they don't stay shut. Uh, you have to put a little um, closure on them, which is a little bit annoying, uh, but that that's the bags from Ikea. And as I say that, this one is staying shut, so it's calling me a liar, but th these don't, actually don't stay shut once you start moving them around. Uh, but anyway, we'll get these put away. I want to get these in the fridge and cool them down as quick as I can. So the nice thing about these bags is you can kind of move the food around inside them to get uh, the warmer center food into the outside um, just to get them as quickly cooled down as possible because that's really important. Uh, potatoes are one of those things you got to be careful with, of course, so I'm not going to close it up quite yet, but I'll just put it into my fridge right now as it is so that way it'll cool, cool this down as quickly as possible. just wiping dry my pan here. Uh, I gave it a good scrub with some soap and water, utilize my sink. Uh, of course, I do try to use the vinegar as much as possible, but with some things, the vinegar just doesn't really do a great job on. Uh, so I do keep a couple of scrub brushes around uh, for the things that need a good scrubbing. And uh, so that's done that for that. And uh, I'm also going to do the same thing with my carbon steel pan. Uh, I'm not going to clean this out with vinegar. Uh, I'm going to give this a good scrub with some hot water. Okay, I'm going to put the meat in the fridge to try to cool it down as quick as possible. Got to mind our food safety as much as we can. And it's starting to get a little chilly out, so I think I'm going to close the door before I start making dinner. And dinner should be pretty good because we're going to utilize some of this meat and make some really good tacos for dinner. Now, it would be really difficult for me to pick one food as my favorite, but if I had to pick one favorite food, it would be tacos. And so I'm excited about tonight's dinner because it's going to go together really quickly, but we do have a couple things to prep first. Uh, I have some cabbage. I've been working on this for a little bit, uh, red cabbage. I'm just going to uh, slice up a little bit of this and have this ready, and then we'll start working on the tacos themselves. So when it comes to cabbage, I like this shredded as finely as I can get it. And it's a little difficult with a little paring knife like this. So I'm just taking my time. And I do realize that this would be much quicker if I would just get out my chef's knife and be done with this. Uh, but I am using this little paring knife because it's easy. It's right here and at hand. So I'm not going to bother looking for my chef's knife. I'm not even sure where I put it at the moment. I stuffed it away somewhere uh, and I don't even know where it is. I just always grab this little serrated uh, paring knife and it works quite well. Okay, I think I have enough cabbage for now. You know, another tool that would be even better uh, than a chef's knife uh, would be a mandolin. And uh, I used to have one before I moved into the van and I decided to get rid of it and not keep it in the van because I really didn't like washing that thing by hand. I always just would throw it in the dishwasher uh, it was always a little bit scary to wash by hand. Uh, if you haven't used a mandolin before, it, there's a little thin blade that runs across the little uh, plate, 
and uh, it, it works really good, especially for fine shaving stuff. Uh, but it's very sharp and you have to really be careful when you use it and keep your fingers back. Um, I don't think I had a guard with mine because I worked in a restaurant for so many years. We really didn't use guards. There was just no uh, time for that kind of thing. So you learn to just use it uh, without a guard. And uh, yeah, they're, they're a little scary to use. So um, I'm, sometimes I miss having the little mandolin, but most of the time I remember those things are just scary. So even if it does take a few minutes longer, a little uh, paring knife or a chef's knife is just fine for me most of the time. Okay, so I'm going to heat up my pan because I'm going to work on the corn tortillas. Uh, we're going to fry these up and uh, just to give a little more uh, pat on the back to Trader Joe's since I have been hard on them the last few weeks. Uh, these are my favorite tortillas. They are from Trader Joe's. Uh, they are not only the least expensive tortillas usually, uh, but they have a great ingredient list. Uh, there's just three ingredients on these and that's what I look for. Uh, most of the time when you see tortillas, corn tortillas, flour tortillas, whatever it is, they have a big huge list of ingredients on them and they are either ingredients that I need to stay away from or that I am just downright allergic to and so I can't can't buy those, can't eat those. So uh, kind of cool that Trader Joe's has good tortillas that I can eat and they are also uh, the least expensive option, at least usually the least ex expensive option I've found. So I've got my pan warming up here and I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil in here. Um, I don't always use olive oil for this, but it's, uh, it's just easy because it's what I've got. Um, so I'm gonna heat up the olive oil and then we're gonna fry the tortillas off in two steps. First step is to fry the tortillas off just real quickly and on both sides and then uh, once I do that, I will just pat them dry a little bit of the excess oil uh, on onto this plate with uh, some paper towel. And this step is just a real quick step to make the tortillas a little bit more pliable. Um, oftentimes uh, with these, if you don't do this step, if you skip this step, uh, the tortillas will crack and split. Because these Trader Joe's tortillas don't have any added preservatives in them, they do go stale a little bit quicker than other tortillas do. Uh, but it's not really a problem here because uh, the oil that we're frying these in, this just quick fry, will kind of freshen them up and make them more pliable. Uh, so that's why I like these tortillas. Uh, they're just the perfect tortilla for me. Uh, we'll make them perfectly edible and perfectly usable uh, and I don't have to worry about all those added ingredients that I have to avoid. Okay so now we're ready to build our tortillas. I did turn my stove off just so I don't overheat my oil in my pan because this might take me a couple of minutes. I, I move kind of slowly here in the kitchen. I'm going to take some of that pre-cooked meat that we had and just add some of that in uh, to each tortilla and I don't want to overfill these but I just want kind of a single layer um, and then we'll fold these over and fry them off just like that. So this usually takes me just a minute or two and then once I get this done I'll turn the flame back on, heat the oil back up and then we'll get to frying these up. Okay, I've got my pan preheated here. I don't have it on too high of a heat. I want to uh, fry these off and get them crispy, but I want to do that slow enough so that it uh, heats up the meat inside. Um, this is a really traditional way of making tacos. Um, there was a place down in LA that we used to go to all the time on Alvera Street, and Alvera Street is a little bit like being in Mexico. You go down there and there's there's a bunch of shops and restaurants and taco shops and we used to go to one taco shop in particular. We'd go there all the time uh, and this is how they cooked uh, their tacos and it's funny that growing up 
and seeing that all the time, watching them make the tacos like that, it never occurred to me to do this at home for myself. So I used to uh, make tacos completely differently uh, than I do now. But this is really a better method because you can crisp up your tortilla and make it nice and crispy if that's the way you want it. And at the same time, heat up the ingredients on the inside. Now, if you don't like a crispy taco, uh, this is probably not the way you really want to do this. You might want to cook them separately or heat the meat up separately and then add the meat into the tortilla once you get it to the desired crispness, crispness that you like. Um, but I like my tacos to be rather crispy, so this works out really well for me. Yeah, I think they are good on the one side. Yeah, they're looking pretty good there. Flip them over. Uh, I think most people would fry these off in a little more oil. They'd put a little more oil in the pan, but I don't find that it's really all that necessary. You can uh, probably see there's a little bit of oil here in the pan, but the pan's not dry but um, I don't really feel the need to, to deep fry these or shallow fry these. I think that this works out just fine. So this will just be a few more minutes on this side to crisp up those tortillas uh, and heat up the meat all the way through. Okay, I think they are done. They're nice and crispy on the outside and fully heated through. So we'll finish these off uh, with my cabbage here. And then I'm gonna add some feta cheese, which reminds me of a uh, Mexican kind of farmer's cheese um, that is a little hard to find. I think I can get it around here, but uh, they don't have it at Trader Joe's, I don't think. Uh, but I like feta, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of feta for that. And then of course, I have my choice of yellow bird, and I think uh, today I'm gonna go with some yellow bird serrano, because nice and spicy, and it goes really good with not only the meat, but uh, with the cabbage too. I just had the realization here that if you ask me what my favorite food is with tacos in front of me, then it makes it a little easier for me to say a taco. Uh, if this were a pizza, I may say pizza at that point in time. But right now I'm gonna go with tacos because this is what I have. And these are actually really good. Um, cool thing is I can put these together in just a few minutes tomorrow for lunch or dinner. Uh, and uh, that's what makes this food prepping thing uh, a good thing to do. I never really could figure out food prepping when I first heard people say that they were doing it. But when you think about it this way, it kind of makes a little bit of sense. Uh, it takes a few minutes to put everything together, but then you can have something really remarkable in just a few minutes time. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say for today. Uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.